Welcome back aviation enthusiasts and fellow aircraft builders. Today's video is going to be less about uh, tips and tricks for your airplane and more about an option you have when you're building your airplane if you're doing it from plans. Like when I was starting to cut my spars, uh, I was very apprehensive because I didn't want to ruin materials. As you can see in front of me, uh, I have some welding stuff here. I'm very excited about this material or these uh, supplies here. Uh, so I want to talk today about welding for your airplane. Now before we get started, I want to stress uh, the importance. Uh, if you are going to weld your own structures in your airplane, you need a pretty good level of skill to do so. In a Zenith CH750, there are not a lot of welded structures in the airplane. You have welded fuel tanks, partial cabin structure that's welded out of 4130 chrome molly, and then you have various fittings and your seat backs and some other things that are welded out of 4130 material. And there are a few other little odds and ends like AN hardware that get welded to the steel structures in the airplane. But overall, very few welded structures. So few, in fact, that most of you probably would elect to just buy those pieces a la carte. But with price being paramount for me while I build this aircraft, and uh, with some troubles that I've had trying to source uh, local professional services, I decided to learn to weld uh, most of my structures myself. Now, a little background information on this. I originally planned to purchase all the welded parts, at least, at the very least, a la carte, if not purchasing the entire finishing kit from Zenith, which includes a lot of the welded structures and other parts. I had originally met with a local welding shop, and we have three or four of them around here, but I originally met with a local shop, took them the blueprints, asked them if they would be willing to weld the fuel tanks. They agreed. They quoted me a price of approximately $50 per tank, which I thought was very reasonable. It's probably uh, criminally cheap to get them that cheaply, considering that Zenith charges about $900 for the pair of tanks. So for $25 to $75 worth of materials and $50 bucks per welded tank, I was going to be looking at about $100, yeah, $125 to $200 per tank, which would have made my, uh, at least the fuel tank portion, about half price or less. So they agreed to do this back in August of 2015. I then took the fabricated fuel tanks and fittings and everything else to them uh, in January, and they promptly turn, turned me away. The owner had decided that they weren't interested in doing this work for me, and they were, quite frankly, very rude about it and pretty much showed me the door as soon as I brought them the uh, welded structures. And this had nothing to do with the quality of the fabrication that I had done previously. This was strictly they just didn't want the uh, liability of welding on an aircraft. And you may find that you run into that with professionals in your area. I started building the engine conversion for this airplane back in 2004 when I sourced my original Corvair engine core. And I ran into the same problem with this, which almost led me to shelve the project permanently. Uh, lots of machine shops just simply wouldn't do um, work in specification with what I had provided to them, blueprint-wise or whatever. They'd agree to do it one way and then do it an entirely different way. And I ran into that problem after problem after problem, which led to me doing a lot of the work that I originally intended to hire done uh, myself. So if you decide to delve into the welding and you're not a welder to begin with, do not take it lightly. Welding on an aircraft is a whole different animal than welding on anything else. Do your research, find out what you need to do, what you need to learn. So in preparation of that, I did a lot of research on what kind of welding had to be done on this aircraft. For the aluminum structures on the aircraft, you are pretty much restricted to TIG welding with an argon shielding gas. You need a TIG welder that can weld AC, not DC, so that pretty much guarantees that you're going to have to buy a more expensive machine than you otherwise would, uh, like Harbor Freight level machines and things like that that only weld in DC, even if they're TIG machines, are not going to do the job when you need to weld aluminum. So I did a ton of research. I knew that I didn't need a professional level machine. I knew that a hobby level machine was going to be plenty. And so I ended up settling on the AHP Alpha TIG 200X. The nice thing about this machine is that the company has done continual upgrades on it since its introduction in, I believe, 2013 or 2014. They've listened to their customers. They've upgraded a, a lot of things on here that, when the machine was introduced, were either substandard or just not the kind of product that you'd want to use for welding. This is the 2016 model. Uh, this is a 200-amp AC-DC inverter-based welder. comes with a nice... Uh, 
number 17 style flex head torch. Um, the flexible hosing uh, hose on it is an improvement over the 2015 model. It comes with a consumables pack, your uh, gas shielding line hose, a remote trigger to use uh, with the torch so you can use the finger trigger instead of the foot pedal. It still has the standard import style foot pedal that a lot of people are not happy with, but there are ways to uh, make this more functional uh, that don't take a lot of effort and it is a very controllable usable pedal. It's just kind of backwards from what, what a, a standard foot pedal normally would look like and what a lot of welders have trained on. You can also do stick welding with this. This is your typical stick welder uh, electrode here. It comes with an improved gas flow meter, a pretty standard grounding clamp. There's a pigtail here to run it off of a 110 circuit. I have to do a little bit of experimenting with it to see if I can actually weld everything on 110, but I have the capacity in my uh, garage panel to weld a 220 for it without any trouble at all, so I may just go ahead and do that. So this welder as it sits, it's uh, very highly reviewed by a number of uh, sources. I did a lot of reading on welders, reading of reviews, watching videos on the capabilities of this welder. I've seen it in the hands of professional welders versus amateur welders and I settled on this one. Now a step up from this would be something from Everlast in the PowerTig series. You can certainly, if you have the money, go ahead and, and move into uh, Miller or Lincoln territory. Hobart makes a nice welder as well. Um, but at this price point, this welder on Amazon currently is $680 plus $30 shipping. So for $710, you get everything you can see in front of me in the video here. I still need to get an argon tank for it. I still need to get some electrodes and I still need to get some additional filler wire. Although I do have some aluminum TIG wire here, but this package as it sits is $680. To step up from that, you start eating into the savings that you're going to get if you weld everything yourself. I did a materials calculation, including all the other tools I'm going to show you. So I added all the tooling costs, all the materials calculations together and figured out that with this equipment, I can weld everything in my airplane, including materials and including the stock and consumables and everything for about $2,000 to $3,000 less than I could buy these parts made from Zenith. So it's a substantial savings and that savings includes the cost of the materials. So it's not insignificant. And plus at the end of it, I'll have a new skill. I'll have a welder that I can use for other projects. And I always like having a project anyway. So even when the airplane's done, I'm sure I'm either gonna wanna build another airplane or at least something else. What I'm gonna show you totally today represents about 1300 to $1,400 worth of equipment that I had to buy, including the welder. And that's gonna net me a savings of 2000 to $2,500. As we move down the table, you can see back here, this surface here, this is the uh, Harbor Freight welding table. It's not extremely robust. It's a fairly heavy table, but it's certainly not anything you're gonna use for pro professional grade welding. But uh, for the little fittings and things that we have to do on this aircraft, it's not a bad deal. Uh, moving down here the, are my filler rods, which I sourced on Amazon. This section of the table right here basically represents everything from Harbor Freight, including that welding table I showed you. So here I've got a tubing notcher. This is the infamous tubing notcher that needs to be adjusted before you can use it. Um, that's about a $75 purchase from Harbor Freight. I've got some MIG welding pliers just to use as a, um, just as a pair of handy welding only pliers, even though this is not a MIG welder. I've got some butt welding clamps. I've got various sizes of uh, magnetic clamps. I have a soapstone marking set up with holder. I've got a welding chipping hammer. Remember I said that you can do your uh, stick welding, basic arc welding with that. So I've got a slag chipper there. There's a welding blanket to perfect, protect anything from the uh, welding, even though TIG welding doesn't throw a lot of uh, sparks and things like that. I thought it'd be nice just to have that. I've got some welding sleeves here from Harbor Freight uh, that I can use. So that's that's the stuff that I sourced from Harbor Freight. And of course you can get stuff from Harbor Freight very reasonably. Yeah, there's no reason to spend a ton of money on some magnetic clamps. I mean, any magnetic clamps are going to do the job. These little cheap clamps here are going to do the job. This, this welding chipper hammer, it's going to do the job. The most expensive piece in here was the tubing notcher, and I have to take some measurements to make sure that it's going to center the tubing, and uh, otherwise you have to shim this plate here, and there's videos on YouTube about that. But I've, I've just taken a quick glance at it, and it looks like I don't have to shim this one, but uh, time will tell once I start notching real tubing. Uh, moving down the line, this stuff I sourced from Amazon. I've got a, uh, a fairly inexpensive welding helmet here. I didn't care about the skull design. It was just uh, the helmet 
was a basic price so I wasn't going for style there but that's what it came with. If you'll notice up close here this welding helmet does have a very small viewing area. Uh, professional welding helmets their viewing screen is about this tall with the solar panel right above there that you can see in the strip but then the screen on them is all the way up to solar panel so this is a cheaper helmet with a narrower viewing profile I think it'll do for what I need it to do but if I start getting into problems I'm only out 45 or 50 dollars I can go and spend more on a welding helmet if I want to the chop saw here this is a Porter cable chop saw I went back and forth on this chop saw over whether to buy this or a Harbor Freight model I liked this one a little bit better and I think it was only $20 more than the Harbor Freight model I was looking at so I went ahead and sprung for this one. I also bought some DeWalt cutoff wheels for the steel. I've got just assorted wire brushes, I've got a Miller um, wire gauge, a little welding symbols cheat sheet from uh, Builders Book Incorporated, a TIG finger heat shield, another wire brush and some other wire brushes there. So those are the things I sourced from Amazon and then moving down here uh, aircraft spruce and specialty sells cutoffs of material so they call it a bargain bag so I got a 4130 bargain bag and a 6061 tubing bargain bag and these are just simply practice materials I don't know if I'll use any of these for any actual projects or not but for 50 bucks shipped I got two bags of, or two big boxes of various cutoffs of material to use in my to practice with so Everything on the table, including the welding the welding table, the Harbor Freight welding, welding table in the back there, not counting my tools at the end on the other side of the welder. That represents about $1, a $1,300 investment, uh, including an argon bottle that I don't have yet. Uh, my reasoning for this, uh, I'm very excited to learn how to weld. I've always wanted to learn how to TIG weld. I've always wanted to have a welder. I personally have experience in wire stick welding, so uh, your typical arc welding. I have some experience in oxyacetylene gas welding and I have a very little bit of experience in wire feed or MIG welding. So I've, I've had some exposure to all the various types of welding. I've actually done a little bit of TIG welding. Uh, I've had some lessons but uh, no real practical experience TIG welding and it has been a number of years since I've done any other welding. So on one hand I know what I'm getting myself into and on the other hand I have a long way to go before I can weld on this aircraft. So my plan is to spend the next six months practice welding on things like my aluminum tubing, my scrap aluminum sheet for my tank uh, to practice up for my tanks, 4130 tubing. I've got 4130 plate here down here. This is the actual plate for the aircraft. I bought it in sections. So these are the 4130 plate sizes that I need to fabricate the parts in the aircraft. I've also got right, right angle die grinders and things like that that I've already had that I didn't have to buy. But my plan is to spend a good solid six months practicing with this welding setup, fine tuning my skills, learning what works, what doesn't, making the mistakes over the course of time so that I can be confident that when it comes time to welding uh, the structures on the aircraft that I'm confident that my welds will be satisfactory, very strong and proper. Again, a word of caution on that, if you don't think that you're either able to learn how to do that or you're not willing to take the time to learn how to do those things, you're only going to save $2,500 to $3,000 at the most by purchasing all of this and learning how to weld. For me, it's a win-win. I save money on my aircraft and I have a welder you know, to show for it at the end and, and the ability to weld. But uh, my first project is actually going to be a welding cart. After I've practiced for a while, I'm actually going to build the welding cart to go with it. For me, this makes sense. It may not make sense for you. It almost didn't make sense for me in the beginning, but it does now because I'm just tired of trying to depend on other people that simply just won't follow any kind of directions or blueprints or uh, standards that I need them to follow. So when you need something done right, as they say, do it yourself. The question remains on whether or not I'll be able to do this myself. If it comes down to it and I've practiced for six months or longer and the welding just isn't coming together for me and I'm not able to really learn this skill, I may still end up purchasing the welded products or, and or having them done professionally if I can find somebody to do it. But, you know, I could, I'll still have the welder in order to weld up a trailer hitch or whatever I need, you know, that's not in an airplane. But it's just something that I wanted to talk about. It's an option for you guys if you're, if you're really on the fence about whether or not to weld. Uh, the Alpha TIG 200X is a, a well-reviewed product. They make improvements almost every year from what I understand. And it is a hobby level machine. You're not going to run a production shop on an Alpha TIG 200, but where... You only need to weld occasionally, but you, do, you still need to weld good solid welds and, and you need to weld a variety of materials. This seemed to be by far the best bang for the buck that I could find. 
and uh, they've got a solid warranty and it's a, uh, a well-reviewed product so if you've got any questions please let me know uh, any recommendations let me know I know I'm, I'm probably gonna hear some people saying I'm crazy for learning how to weld I don't have any welding experience I understand that side of the argument believe me but for me I uh, I get to fabricate more of my aircraft and that's much more satisfying to me than paying someone else to do it. So wish me luck. Thanks for watching. Good luck with your projects and uh, we'll see you soon.